In his exception speech after he was declared winner by the Independent National Electoral Commission, Soludo said he remembered all those who died during the course of his governorship race, especially the policemen, and prayed God to continue to grant their souls eternal rest. Saludo is expected to be sworn into office in March 2022 after the expiration of the two-term tenure of the incumbent governor, Willie Obiano. You still allowed me, allowed and supported me to step out in the service of our people. As I promised, I will work hard every day, never to disappoint you. At this moment, we must remember and will continue to remember all those who died in the course of this movement, especially the three policemen who were killed by unknown gunmen during our town hall meeting with use in my word. May God continue to grant their souls eternal rest. In the meantime, President Buhari has announced that Nigeria is looking to invest in nuclear energy as part of efforts to reduce dependence on fossil fuels and adapt to climate change. The president's remark in his message to rich nations at the COP26 was contained in a statement signed by the presidential spokesman Garba Shehu. According to President Buhari, Nigeria is among a handful of African countries exploring nuclear power with a research reactor already operational. Away from that, the federal government has dismissed as false and unfounded the rumors circulating on social media that the third mainland bridge in Lagos has opened up. According to the spokesperson of the Federal Ministry of Works, Bode Akinola, the Federal Controller of Works in Lagos, Olukayo de Popola, drove on the bridge without noticing any opening, as claimed in the rumors. He advised members of the public not to take the report seriously, adding that the bridge was safe for motorists. On Namdi Kanu's trial, Justice Binta Nyako of a federal high court in Abuja today adjourned till January 19, the trial of detained leader of the indigenous people of Biafra. The adjournment came after Kanu's team of lawyers staged a walkout over the refusal of operatives of the Department of State Services to allow some of, the, some of them access into the courtroom. Delivering a ruling, Justice Nyako expressed displeasure over the conduct of Kanu's lawyers and declined to dismiss the pending application, but adjourned the case till January 19 and 20, 2022 for trial. On legislative matters, Senate has approved $16.2 billion, $1.02 billion, billion pounds and a grant component of $125 million under the 2018-2020 external borrowing rolling plan for the federal government. This followed the consideration of the report of the Senate Committee on Local and Foreign Debts by the Senate. The report was presented by the Chairman of the Committee, Senator Clifford Odia, at plenary. Still from the Red Chamber's Senate has directed the Inspector General of Police, Ahmed Baba al Khali, to publish the report of the investigation into the invasion of the residence of Justice Mary Odili's house. The resolution of the lawmaker followed a point of order moved by Senator Betty Apiafi at plenary. The Senate condemned the invasion allegedly carried out by security agents based on a controversial court order and described it as a breach of justice Odile's privacy. From the House of Representatives, the lawmakers are requesting for urgent steps to prevent a natural disaster in communities in the Etiosa local government area of Lagos State, following the encroachment of the lagoon. In a motion, the lawmaker representing Etiosa federal constituency, Ibrahim Obanikoro, stated that the threats to lives and property in areas like Banana Island, Parkview Estate, Osborne Foreshore Estate, Ikoyu Victoria Island, Leki Aja, among others, in a Tiosa local government area of Lagos State, was disturbing. He attributed the situation to storm water.
ocean encroachment and heavy rainfalls, noting that several property running into billions had been destroyed by floods, causing displacement of families and loss of lives. The House therefore urged the Ecological Fund Office to carry out immediate environmental impact assessment of the area towards containing climate change, ocean surge and other natural hazards. Still on the legislature, House of Representatives has passed a bill for harmonized retirement age for teachers in the country. The executive bill was passed yesterday at the resumption of plenary in the lower chamber of the National Assembly in Abuja. The bill, which is sponsored by the House leader Al-Hazan Dongoa and his colleague Adekoya Abdul-Majid, seeks to raise the retirement age for teachers from 60 to 65 years and increase their years of service from 35 to 40 years. Back here in Akwaibom, State Civil Society Organizations Forum is advocating the strengthening of a consequence mechanism to ensure that those in positions of authority are deterred from stealing from the treasury of the people. The chairman of the forum, Hilary Udo, made the call while fielding questions from Spectrum television reporters. He commanded the Federal High Court ruling, which convicted the, and sentenced the former chairman of the defunct pension reform task team, Abdul Rashid Minor, to eight years in prison for money laundering. Quantum of the funds that this man, you know, uh, aggrandized to himself that he pillaged from, from pensioners for, for, for him to be given 62 years running concurrently for eight years is a slap on the wrist. To ask him to refund just about 2.1 billion out of the multi billions that he took, that's not enough. He's just going, they are sending him to go and rest for eight years. He comes back and he enjoys his loot. This is not what we want. And we are advocating that consequence mechanism you know, uh, in our country should be strengthened and made strong enough uh, such that it deters. As you mean, if Mena is jailed for life, any other person sitting in the pension office right now would know that if he infringes on the law, if he, if he pilfers, you know, the common patrimony of the people, he will end up spending the rest of his life in jail. The judgment is not deterrent enough because when the judiciary passes this judgment, it's supposed to act as deterrent, all right? But this one on Mena, is not enough to deter others. They will just steal more, you know, and use some of it to to further their their their, their way into safety. Good thing that you know judgment has been passed. Good thing that Mena has been convicted finally. Now he's been asked to make repayments, but eight years, sixty-two years running concurrently for eight years isn't enough deterrence. Well, still in a cry bomb, the police command has vowed to make the state waterways unsafe for criminals. This was contained in a statement signed by the command's public relations officer, S.P. Odiko Magdan. According to the statement, the commissioner of police, Andrew Emengeme, who said the recent deployment of security operators in the state have started yielding fruits, urged criminals to steer clear of the state. He said the command nabbed two suspected sea pirates and recovered firearms and four stolen engine boats from them. Thanks for staying with us on Spectrum News at 4. In Africa, United Nations says 72 drivers contracted to deliver humanitarian aid have been arrested in the war-torn north of Ethiopia. It said the drivers who were working for the World Food Program were detained in Samara capital of the Afar region. The UN is speaking to the government to establish why they were stopped. The war in Ethiopia has caused a massive humanitarian crisis with more than 5 million in need of aid. The, there are 16 remaining in detention and six have been released. So that, that's the, the, the breakdown. Uh, they come from various uh, UN agencies. They're all national staff. Um, it is imperative that they, uh, that they be released. Still in Africa, police have seized thousands of spent cartridges in Nakuru, Kenya and are holding a 33-year-old man of harboring the cartridges in his house. Rift Valley Regional Criminal Investigations Officer Mwenda Memi said investigators believe that the other suspect on the run is the owner of the illegal catch. 
Police say female suspect believed to have been working with the man is on the run and the man whose name remains undisclosed was arrested after a tip-off from the public. On the foreign scene, Swedish Prime Minister Stefan Löfven has tendered his resignation to the Speaker of Parliament, Andres Nolan. Today, reports say the move was widely expected and paves the way for his designated successor, Magdalena Andersen, ahead of next year's general election. Andersen, who is currently finance minister, was elected to replace Löfven as party leader putting her on track to become the country's first woman prime minister if she wins a vote in parliament. On our business news today, 25 years after the collapse of the Soviet Union, Bulgaria and Nigeria have unveiled the Nigeria-Bulgaria business exchange platform to strengthen bilateral cooperation and bridge trade and investment gaps between both countries. Ambassador Extraordinary and uh, Plenipotentiary of the Republic of Bulgaria, Yanko Yodanov in Abuja, described the platform as something that had been the goal of both countries cooperation for so long. He said the event marked an excellent bilateral cooperation between the two nations and underscored the need for sustainability of a strong relationship between them. On our health news, Nigeria's Center for Disease Control, NCDC, says the country has continued to record increase in the number of confirmed cases of COVID-19 as 64 new cases have been recorded with eight deaths. Nigeria now has a total of 212,829 confirmed cases, 204,335 discharged, and 2,914 deaths recorded in 36 states and the Federal Capital Territory. In sports, Premier League has rejected the idea of its clubs wearing their away kits at home on Boxing Day to raise awareness around homelessness. Homeless charity shelter hope to get the support of clubs for the hashtag No Home Kit initiative. However, while the clubs were supportive of the idea, the Premier League said it would break its rules around kits. On our entertainment news, winner of the Nobel Peace Prize Award, Malala Yousafzai has gotten married in a ceremony in Birmingham, Central England. She announced the development on her social media handle. It could be recalled that the Nobel Prize winner was shot in the head by the Pakistani Taliban for campaigning for girls' education in 2012 and got the Nobel Peace Prize at 17 in 2014. In a related development, the children's rights activist has signed a deal with an online TV platform to show Malala's drama and documentaries which focus on women and children. And that's all we have for you at this time. Be sure to follow us on social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel, all of which you can find on our website, SpectrumTV.ng. You have been watching Spectrum News at 4. I am Saviour Robert. Do enjoy the rest of your day.